today what we do, what we'll do is we'll discuss about IP addressing. Okay, so I want to know the basic difference between first of all public IP and private IP. Okay, Mala or Madhuri, any idea about public and private? No, uh, using public IP we can communicate uh, with, uh, within a network only and then in public IP we can communicate over the outside the network. So public IP is nothing but like uh, it's publicly available, you can access the system uh, or you can access that IP via internet or it's, a, it's open to all. Public means it's open to all. Private means it's a restricted to a limited uh, ports or a limited uh, systems, uh, like uh, specifically only to that network area. Specifically only to the network area. Fine. Yeah. Okay. And your thoughts? Any, any other thoughts from anyone? Public and private IP. Mm. So mostly like it won't... Uh, let you access via internet. Um, okay, let's imagine. Take a small example. Everybody has home internet, right? Okay, and you have a Wi Fi router and you connected to <coughs> internet, right? So, from Wi-Fi router, you, you got one cable, imagine you have one desktop. Can you be on mute, please? There's some background noise. I have a desktop. And laptop. You have these many devices at your home. Okay, now tell me <coughs> where you will use public IP and where you will use private IP at your home. Anyone? Right? Usually for desktops and laptops, uh, I mean within home, uh, we'll access all these uh, public IPs uh, like desktop or laptop uh, and all. But uh, imagine for internet and all like you'll be using. Uh, Sorry. For desktop and laptop, it will be a uh, private IP. Private. Okay. Yeah. And for, for the you... internet, yeah. For mobile? Yeah, mobile also. Okay, and for TV? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, those are all the private IPs because you are connected to a particular Wi-Fi uh, where yeah. your internet is getting access. Okay. So, but your internet uh, access will be public or it might be a vice versa, I believe. I'm not <laughs> sure, but... Right. Okay, <clears throat> see. In this setup, you have some set of private IPs and you must have one public IP otherwise it won't work one public IP it will sit here okay so imagine if I have all these devices at my home and I do have internet connection if I want to find out my IP okay so I'll simply go what is my IP so this is my public IP address. Your public IP address. This is my public IP address. You understand? And 
what my laptop has got. <coughs> This is my laptop. But what my Wi-Fi? What is my Wi-Fi router IP? So at my home, the IPs are something like this: one ninety two, one sixty eight, one dot one, and so on till. 192, 168, 1.254. Right? So within this range, <clears throat> I have my desktop, laptop, mobile, TV, Alexa, whatever the device I have, they will connect and they will communicate within this range. And if they want to exchange some data in between, if they want to exchange some data in between, <clears throat> they can communicate because over the same network. But if they want to access something from the internet, something from the internet, then they will route the traffic to Wi-Fi router. Wi-Fi router will send that data to internet. And if some some data if i want to fetch from internet i must have some destination right so my destination is this once any data or any packet received from the internet till here wi-fi router will route that to private network this is public and this is this is public and this is private <clears throat> got it this is for simple home setup simple home setup but when when we <clears throat> when we are talking about enterprises okay when we are talking about enterprises imagine how they are managing it now i'm saying one desktop, one laptop, one mobile, one TV, and so on. So, replace these names with thousand people who are sitting in the floor. Okay, you have one floor, one office where thousand people are working. <clears throat> some some of them have laptops, and some of them have desktops, and few security cameras are there, and more thing what we call it as the swipe card machine swipe cards door swipe cards they also have IP addresses right they also send the data to centralized system so you have such a devices across the floor and they want to communicate with each other then how you will design it understand the query <clears throat> right so if you have a floor imagine you have a two wings and four departments okay now how you plan your IP addressing because any, <clears throat> let's say you walk into the walking into the office in the morning and you simply turn on your laptop automatically you, you connect it to the Wi-Fi and you don't need to connect to the VPN you straight away log into your Outlook on uh, Skype okay then how it is happening Right? There must be some sort of network setup that has to be in place within the floor to help employees to connect and manage their day-to-day -day stuff. So there, what kind of IP addressing you are using?
when you go to office connect your laptop what is the ip you getting anyone no no idea bala hmm? it should be again private network <clears throat> private network only i want to understand <clears throat> what kind of ip it's a private ip mm -hmm. uh, then they might have a set of uh, reserved ips uh, and from the private ips again uh, those uh, those will be distributed to public ips uh, within the system or okay, within the floor okay <clears throat> So let's take an example, the same example in a different way. Mm. Working for ABC company and they have a three of, they have one data center and three offices <coughs> or two offices. DC and okay. imagine 100 people working here around 1500 people working here and you have around 1000 devices here now your aim is to Assign the IP address for these thousand devices, fifteen hundred people, five hundred people. What you will do? Are you going to assign the public IP or a private IP? First of all, hmm? public or private? Which IPs we assign? Obviously, private IPs. Okay, then my question is, why can't you assign public IPs to everyone? Huh? Any reason? Security concerns. Yes, it can be accessed by anyone. Uh, <laughs> this is available. Okay, so the main problem is you cannot assign individual public IPs to individuals across the globe. Okay, because the planet IPs will exhaust if you start assigning the IP public IP to each and every device. So let's say you have Alexa, you have TV, you have mobile, and you have laptop. So all these devices, for each device, if you start assigning the public IP, you will exhaust with the public IPs. So before we <coughs> before we start assigning the IP addresses to this scenario, let's understand what we have, basically. As I said, let me... Okay. <clears throat> so basically, IP addresses, how it looks like? There are, imagine there are two types of IP addresses, IPv4 and IPv6. What is IPv4? How it looks like? It looks like this. Sorry. It starts with and ends with what about IPv6? What about IPv6? This is
my v6 address. This is my v6 address. Okay. And this is my v4 address. You look at two IP addresses on my machine. So basically, this is 32 bit and this is 128 bit IP address. That, that is how when they designed it. So I have designed this. They designed in 32 bit format and they, they thought that <coughs> if the people start using these IP addresses, they, they will exhaust by 2000s. Early 2000s, they must exhaust. But considering this, they developed 128-bit IP addressing called IPv6. But since last 10 years I'm working, I've never seen customers using IPv6 in their production environment or any other environment. Okay, still we are using IPv4 only. Okay, so your AWS and Azure or GCP or your home or your office supports both. But I haven't seen customers using IPv6. So <coughs> rolled out from our discussion. So let's concentrate on IPv4. <coughs> IPv4, as I said, starts from here ends here right but they have further divided into some classes class a sorry class a class b class c class d and class e if we ip address classes class A, B, C, D, E. Okay, if you look at D, reserved for multicast groups, E, reserved for future usage or research and development purpose. Means, these two are rolled out again. Whoever has developed, he hasn't gave the access to use these ranges. So, across the globe, people have to use IP addresses within this range only now let's understand what is that range uh, from where it starts and where it ends class a basically starts at 2 126.255.255.255 right and class b starts Anyway, uh, 0 and 255, we cannot use it, but just want to mention the range. And class C This is class C range. Hmm. Now I have a laptop running on this IP range. Okay, can you look at and tell me in which class it is running? Class C. Let's copy this. <coughs> now let me do some get me public IPs um, ping. Get the IP. What 
What is the difference between these two? Understand? If I say godaddy.com, I'm getting a response from this IP. It means godaddy.com is using this IP. This website is running on host where the IP is assigned. The IP is this. <clears throat> so what is the difference between these two? So this is public, public IP. IP. This is private IP. Private. Means class C has both public and private. Similarly, class B also has the same public and private. Class A also has same public and private. So how you, <coughs> how you will identify? So what they did, let's say, they have created one private range 10.0.0.0 to 10.255. This is the private range within class A. If you look at, fine, right? So rest one dot public range. What is the public range? One dot zero dot zero dot zero to <coughs> nine dot two to five two to five two to five and eleven dot. So they further divided into public and private like this. Clear? When it comes to class B, <coughs> when it comes to class B, what they did, class B also has a private range 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.0.0. Two fifty five, two fifty five. Let me check. Yes. Okay, this is class B, private, and when it comes to public, rest all public. One seventy two dot fifteen dot and one seventy two dot. Thirty two dot zero dot zero two one ninety one. This is the public range. Okay, when it comes to class C, what is the private range? Private range is very simple one ninety two one sixty eight zero dot zero two. 192, 168, 255.255. <coughs> that is the private range. And what is the public range? 192.0.0.0 and 0 169.0.0. This is the public range. This way they divided all the IPs into public and private. So if you look at anything which is running on 192.168 means it's a private. So basically this you will use it for home or yeah, home purpose I can say. This range you will see <coughs> home purpose. Any example for this?
any example your mobile if you if you enable the mobile tethering or wi-fi wi-fi tethering automatically the device which is connected to your your mobile to use your internet is also functions under class c okay <clears throat> and where you'll use small and medium enterprises you'll use private IP address and then large enterprises you'll use class A so wherever, wherever you go and <coughs> log in in your organizations most of the time you'll see the IP addresses starts with 10 dot series for your office agree or disagree Agree. Bala, able to. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, I have to mute myself because <clears throat> yeah. I'm so sorry about Yeah, no problem. So I want to understand, or I want to find out some examples where I'll see some of these classes they are using, or public IPs which are using are hosted on different classes. We already have class C one example. Class A. One seventy six thirty two. Right? Within this range. Within this public range, one seventy two thirty two one zero three. Right? Public. Right, class B. <clears throat> it's also running on class B. Running on class A ninety eight, right? So you take anything, any any global website, it must run with one of these ranges IP address. Either it class A, class B, class C that belongs to public, you must see they get resolved. <coughs> Clear? On this I don't want to spend much time on uh, this theory IP address concepts but let's move on to scenario what the scenario what we have built here have you cleared the IP address page no uh, can you send that thing in my mail then I'll save it in your Google Drive thank you okay so here in this scenario I said ABC company and it's a small <coughs> setup you have one DC and two offices now tell me which IP address you will adopt here which which one you can use it can I use this one class B because of the medium enterprise so what I will do is I will use class B here private so 172.16.0.0 to 172.20.0.0 dot I'll dedicate to data center possible and Sorry, one seventy two dot twenty five dot zero dot zero slash sixteen. I'll give or other words one seventy two dot 
75.0.0 same thing both are same the notation difference 172.26.0.0/16 or same thing This is the IP range I will adopt because the reason is I want to connect these three offices together via some firewalls. Like this. Why you, why you want to connect all of this? Because you people sit here want to access these devices over the private network and you want to talk to these people over the private network and these people want to access the devices over the private network and talk to you guys over the private network so to establish private connectivity between your organization or between your locations i need to configure vpn we call it as okay so this you call it as technically uh, i will do all these things within aws as well site to site vpn this is also one more site to site vpn this is also one more site to site vpn so once you establish this this type of connectivity between your offices now you are sitting here somewhere, your laptop, you have one IP. Your laptop has got one IP, 172.26.92.69 is your laptop IP address. Okay, now you want to talk to some device, 172. Dot 19.221.9 this is some device from here you want to talk to this device can someone explain how that packet travels first of all identify where this IP is sitting or where you have allocated that range you are allocated data center right so this belongs to one device here means from your laptop you are trying to connect to one of the device over here so how the tra packet will travel so from your office or from your laptop it first goes to the nearest switch or gateway and this gateway will hand over the packet to the firewall or the VPN device and the VPN device will add the secure key secure key and put it on tunnel okay if this packet is put it on tunnel it directly hits here then this VPN will receive it and it has another gateway in the back end and this will broadcast to the respective destination within this room somewhere somewhere in the corner in the rack you have your device and it will receive the packet okay we'll see all these things later on in vmware you can clearly test it okay now this is not the vmware class so let's move on to azure sorry AWS
how you want to use these IP addresses in AWS. <coughs> I said, this is a, let's take the same scenario, same scenario. Now, the plan is, same ABC company has decided to shut down this, to shut down this, and they want to go to AWS. Okay. Now, can you tell me what needs to be done? Around 1000 devices I have in the data center. Hmm? Any thoughts? First of all, first of all, you need to identify the location. What is the location here? Let's say North Virginia or Ohio, whatever, North Virginia. So do we have AWS presence in North Virginia? Yes, we have. Yes. So we have presence in North Virginia, AWS. So I decided to use which region I'm using. North Virginia. Region is North Virginia. Now, imagine North Virginia is for global public. This AWS data center is for global public. You are not alone or you are, you are not you are not the premium customer or you are, you are not alone customer who is, who is using the services. You have millions of customers who has deployed their servers, who has deployed their services and who has deployed their applications inside the AWS region or AWS data center, I'll say. So how you will plan for your thousand servers within this? means ultimately the aim is you want to shut down all the thousand devices here and you want to move everything to AWS. So if you want to place it here, you need to reserve something or you need to procure something or you need to create a some boundary where you can place your devices because I'll say there are more than million customers or right who are using the same region okay so now i have a portal access you have a portal access and everybody has a portal access so i can log in and deploy my server and you can log in and deploy your server and madhuri can log in and deploy their server and bala can log in and deploy another server so how that is segregated and how that is functioning that is what I want to understand. Voila, clear? Because you can log in and deploy your own machine. Even I can log in and deploy my machine. Yeah. And any Anyone can log in and deploy and start de uh, deploying their services. Then how that can be logically separated within the same building or I said, this is not a single building. The region is collection of six buildings six buildings each building you technically call it as availability zones right you call it as availability zones and consolidately consolidatedly you call it as a region okay but in layman i'll call it as a data center so you have a nearest data center aws data center in north virginia and you are now adapted to use this so part of this you have already created an account now, your your plan is to create a boundary where you can move your devices to AWS. So, how that boundary can be created? What is that boundary? Right. 
So in AWS, once you log in or once you create an account, if you want to deploy something, you need to define your logical boundary where you are going to deploy your devices. Okay, so that logical boundary you call it as AWS VPC. Okay, what is VPC? Let's see what this is. AWS VPC is a commercial cloud computing service that provides users a private virtual private cloud by provisioning a logically isolated section of AWS, AWS services IPsec based virtual network. Means So take this as a the whole <coughs> region and I said we have around six buildings. Right? Okay, you have around six buildings. So, <coughs> me as a customer, if I log in, so what I need to do, I need to create one logical boundary. The logical boundary, which you call it as VPC. So, what is VPC? VPC is a simple logical boundary that you need to define. Okay. Let's say VPC and let me log into the portal quickly. Okay, so this is the region and then if I go to VPC, if you go to VPC, I want to create a subnet, create one year right so this is one b and so on one f right six six zones so if you create a VPC, VPC is a logical boundary. It's spread it across all the zones. And you need to supply your IP boundary for this. So now, which IP address you can use it here? 
Anyone? Anyone? <coughs> Which IP address we should use it here? Private or public? Madhavi, hmm? Bala? everyone is in mute private ips which private ip address we should use okay so in this case this supports all it supports class a you can give like this or it supports class b supports class C as well whatever however you want to manage it you can give the IP address okay it supports all the three so it is up to you which IP address you want to adopt for your company now in our previous example what is the IP address we adopted class B yeah, right yeah that was some medium class Okay, so for this, I need to decide class B range. But before I decide the class B range, I have to relook at the things. If I said relook at the things means how many IPs I have? These many IPs. And how many I have already used? 16 to 20 and 25, 26 gone. So anything which is unassigned. 21 is not used 21 22 23 24 i'm talking about the second digit okay if you are confused second digit 16 to 20 gone 25 is gone 26 is gone okay so what is this class b range 16 to 31 16 to 20 25 26 is gone so 21 to 24 i can use it here right because it is not used anywhere so go back so i'll say out of this i'll boss i want to use this is my range 172.21.0.0 slash 16 means i can place devices inside this logical boundary so now if i want to create a vm i can create a vm anywhere anywhere i can create but the ip range is within that 21 it will not go beyond that 21 bond okay now there is a company which they want to use class a yes you can still do the same you can create one more logical boundary and you can assign the range it works okay so imagine both the both the vpcs belongs to one customer so if I have one device here and I, if I have one device here, will these two communicate with each other? Hmm? Hello. I said both the VPCs belongs to one customer only. And they have two uh, divisions. They created two VPCs and they placed devices in two different VPCs. Will these two devices communicate with each other or not? They communicate with each other. Bala? Madhavi?
is gone. Fine. So these two devices will not communicate with each other by default. Even though that if I said device means it might be a server or it might be a application. Okay, so I have one server here, another server here. If I place these two servers in two different in two different VPCs within the same region, still they don't talk to each other. Clear? Because they are logically separated. You need to establish pairing or you need to establish some sort of connectivity between both of them in order to establish the network connectivity. <clears throat> but if I have a device here and I have a device here, these two can talk to. By default, they will, they will talk to each other. Okay, so the, clear? What I'll do is I'll stop here. If you have any questions, you can ask me and tomorrow we'll start discussing about VPC more detail. Any questions? No. Mother, are you there? Yes, yes. Okay, any questions? Able to understand or still confused? Or you, you need to watch the video once again? What? Yes, sir. I need to watch it once again, sir. Please share with me. Sure. Okay. I'll, up, I'll upload all the videos today and I'll share with okay. you all. Okay. All right. Oh, I'll let me stop here. We'll catch up tomorrow and we'll start discussing about VPC in more detail. And we'll try to put those scenarios in place and start practicing the things from tomorrow. Clear? Let me stop here.